As promised in the last video, you have just now seen me roll out this mysterious Windsor One sample case. I mentioned also in the last video that Dave Rogers with Windsor One actually brought this up to me all the way from Austin. I really appreciate it. And as soon as he handed me these boards, I knew that this was a superior product. Let me just say right off the bat, this is not a Windsor One commercial. This is not sponsored. I'm not getting paid anything. I'm not getting a discount on these materials, nothing. It's just, he said, hey, you seem passionate about what you do. I think you might like our product. This product was made for someone like you. And a lot of you guys already know what this is, but a lot of you don't. You're like me, you're late to the party on a lot of things. So let's look at these boards and I'll explain some of the differences in this and what I typically use. So here's a look at the sample case. You can see it fits conveniently on the tailgate here, but what you'll notice about it is that these moldings are sectioned off into series or families or whatever you want to call them. But you can see the moldings they got the profile where they go, so you can't really get confused. But you've got classical colonial, Greek revival, classical craftsman, um, colonial revival, caps and panel molding. So it's pretty cool. They show you in the catalogs, like how you can build up stuff with this and each series and family of moldings complements each one in that series. So I'll show you some of the profiles of these moldings and why I really think they stand out and that they're superior. Now the sad part about it is I won't be able to use a lot of these because of the job that I do. My day-to-day -day job is usually matching what existing builders have already done. But the biggest question I have is why aren't more builders using this? It's such a much better product. But I guess I know the answer to that question and the answer is they're not willing to spend a little bit more for a superior product. So they're really all about turning a big profit. And when you add another 30 to 40 cents a linear foot for a molding, they're not interested, at least the houses that I work in. Now, if you go custom builders and they actually care like about all the little details, I'm not trying to say that the other builders don't care. I don't want to come off as being some kind of snob, but I mean, there really is a market where people care more about the details and where people just don't like they're just not interested so that's that's the big thing with this but I will tell you when I build my house I will be putting these moldings inside of it so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some up close images and views of the profiles of these moldings but real quick before we do that I wanted to show you the catalog and how these families work so like I mentioned you got your classical colonial here and they kind of show you some examples of what you can do with that where you can stack them up and really just make that trim work pop with all the architectural shapes of the millwork here then greek revival so on and so forth and then if you turn the page they say classical colonial the response to minimalism so these are real basic moldings just real classy and then they have like a little thing about the history of what these moldings are based on so it's pretty cool you, you can get to learn a lot about this stuff and it's really interesting so I know I'm kind of geeking out over here about this, but this is what I'm passionate about, guys. And I'm assuming you are too if you're subscribed to a channel called Finish Carpentry TV. So anyways, let's look at some of these moldings up close and show you guys why I think they're awesome. I'm obviously not gonna show you all of them because I think that would just get redundant and I think you'll get the point after a couple of them. But this right here is a four and a half inch window or door casing, really nice profile on it. It's an inch and 3 16 thick, so it's got a nice uh, built up back if you wanted to like run a wainscot into it or something like that. But it's just a nice piece of molding, nice piece of millwork there. You can see the step downs on this thing are so sharp and precise. They're actually true 90s, which you will never get out of an MDF. And the part I'm referring to is right here, here, and here, how this thing is just cut so nicely. What that's gonna allow you to have is when those miters come together, it's gonna give you a really striking appearance and create some really awesome shadow lines. You can see the depth of the cuts in this. It's really, really cool. So there's a four and a half inch window or door casing there for you. And what I'm referring to on MDF, I'll show you guys this. This is a MDF crown. And if you look at this, those things right there, those could never be a 90 on MDF. You can see they're rounded over. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. 
but you'll, you can't have a sharp edge on MDF because it's too brittle and it'll just flake off. So this is rounded over, this is rounded over. This is a symmetrical crown, obviously. It's gonna be the same on both sides. And you can probably say like, well, that doesn't even matter. You're just being nitpicky. It actually matters a lot to me in my personal opinion. So I'm, it's, that's all it comes down to is personal opinion. And I mentioned in the last video that we're not gonna be able to stop using this, number one, because we're matching the builder. But number two, this only comes in MDF. It's, it's unavailable in any other material. Same thing with this crown right here and many other moldings that are common to this region that I'm in, they only come in MDF. So that's why I'm saying I'm not gonna be able to just switch all to Windsor One. This is a door window casing again, and you can see it has that nice beaded profile on it right there. A nice deep cut in there too. Again, not gonna be able to accomplish that with MDF. And this is a, yeah, it's a one by four. And what I love about their stuff, it's a true one by four. So you're getting a true three quarter inch board. So it's not five eighths, it's not 11 sixteenths you're getting a true three quarter, which you guys saw me struggle in the last video when I got my local stuff. And it was like one was five eighths and one was 11 sixteenths and even varying even more than that in some cases. But that's why I'm switching all of my one by material to Windsor one. Thankfully I can do that because one by is one by, it doesn't matter what the builder does on that. So take a look at this crown. We haven't seen any of their crowns yet. This is a nice clean profile crown. This is just a cove, very similar to that one over there. This is a four and a half inch, and that one over there is a five and a half inch. But again, just nice clean edges on this one. Just a typical crown right here. And what I really like about their solutions, if you check out this, this is a wainscot cap, or you could actually use this as some kind of panel molding. I have all kinds of ideas for this stuff. It's pretty cool. But what this is, let's say you do like a, you know, styles and rails wainscot with the one by stuff. We'll pretend this is our top rail. So this thing would just hug right on top of that. And then there you've got your cap and bottom molding under the cap all in one piece. So a really cool solution there. And again, just a really classy molding. Here's a look at one of the base caps they got. You could also use this. Um, I mean, it's a panel molding. Base cap and panel molding are essentially the same thing. But nice deep cuts right there. Just a really nice looking traditional molding right there. A little more grooves on this one and curves. Then here's a base molding. Pretty basic profile here. This one is five and a half inches by another true three quarter here. So with this one, like let's say you wanted to put Windsor one base in your house, you may want to upgrade your casing as well because more than likely most door casings are going to be half inch or nine sixteenths thick. So if you put something like this up against a door casing like that, it's going to, this is gonna stick out pretty bad and you're gonna have a bad transition there or you might have to do some kind of return or something like that. So just throwing it out there, if you guys want to get this stuff, I don't want to lead you in the wrong direction because you got to think about all the trim work in the house. This stuff was designed to be every trim board in the house. So just think about that. But again, another nice clean profile right there. Check out this huge chair rail right here. Again, I'm saying chair rail, they, they have these things labeled for stuff, but the way my mind works, I could use this for pretty much anything. I could use it for a window apron um, under the window sill, all kinds of things. You could even use this as a door casing, even though it's huge on the back here. It really doesn't matter. You could put a wainscot up against it or whatever. Pretty cool stuff. And one other thing that comes to mind right now is that the primers that they use, it's really cool. They put primer on the front, obviously on the sides, but also on the back, which you don't see a whole lot of. And that's awesome because it seals it and just keeps the board more um, controlled as far as moisture and things like that. So it's nice to see that them put their, their primer on the back. And it's also nice to see that they're not using what's called a gesso coating. I don't know if you guys have ever bought one by stuff from Lowe's and Home Depot or even the shiplap from those places. They use what's known as a gesso coating and basically it's like a clay that they coat the board with 
and that allows them to use more of the board. They can use more imperfected boards and just cover up the knots with their special coating. The problem with that is, is what I've seen, and it's so frustrating, is the layer of primer that's on some of those boards is like literally a sixteenth of an inch thick, which you may think that's not much, but let me bring the tape measure out and show you guys what a sixteenth is. And it's from one little line to one little line. That's a thick, <laughs> that's a thick coating of that gesso primer. And the problem with that is it's not consistent through the board. It's like, okay, you've got like a, a thin layer like this on some parts and then it goes up to a sixteenth of an inch on others. So then you run into the same thing where now these moldings aren't matching up. Now these boards aren't matching up because one's a sixteenth of an inch thicker because they're using this crazy primer. So with all Windsor 1, you don't even have any knots that they're trying to prime over. They only use clear um, pine. They reject all the knotted boards and then they only use an acrylic latex primer and just give you one nice coat of it. So I thought I'd mention that as well. Again, I know I'm geeking out on this stuff. I don't know if people really think about this stuff like the way I do, but it's all stuff that has crossed my mind over the last 10 years of doing this and the frustrations that I've had. So check out this huge base right here. That is a big chunk of millwork right there. And that one is going to go an inch and three sixteenths on that one. So that's a pretty chunky base. You definitely want to have a beefed up door casing to run this into. But again, just super nice precision millwork on this one as well. Here's another one of their crowns. You could use this for um, like a multiple piece buildup or a cabinet. I probably wouldn't just run this one just bare on the ceiling. It's a little too small for that, even for an eight foot ceiling. Yeah, it's three and a half. So there's no way I'd put this one just on a ceiling just too small but with a multiple piece buildup or on some cabinets this one would be good to go now here's one of my favorite moldings that they produce this is an offset panel molding or i think they call it a wainscot cap but i will one day use this as an offset panel molding so again this is going to be a cap similar to the one i showed you earlier where you would have your top wainscot uh, rail and then this would go up against it and then it's milled so that it'll sit flush in that cradled position just like a crown and then that gives you a nice look of a wainscot cap you could also use this as a base cap if you wanted to just lean it pretend like this is the wall and just have that as your base cap which that would be really cool and then what you could do you could use a one by for your casing and then turn this thing up all around it but you better have a lot of room for that that's like that'd be huge <laughs> so this is just basically letting my mind wander through these moldings i'll show you guys one more wainscot cap you can see that right there really nice profile on that one as well has the cove molding built into it if you guys remember when i did my wainscot cap in base i used a cove molding and had to install it as a separate piece but in this case again we'll pretend like this is our top rail and then you would just put that right there on top of it and you'd get both pieces in one piece of millwork so again i know i was a total nerd in this showing you guys this stuff but i guarantee there's people out there who are watching this video who appreciate what i've just showed you because you've been dealing with inferior products and you've been seeing the millwork kind of take a downturn as builders you know demand more and production and population just grows you see all this stuff take a back seat, like the little details and the fine, just things that really make a house and a room just pop. Like the thing I enjoy about my job the most is really creating a vibe for people. So like when you come into a room and it's just a blank wall and we put up an accent wall, it just makes you feel better when you go into that room. It puts you in a different mood. And when you get down to the tiny little details, it just does it that much more. So I know there's other nerds out there who care about this stuff as much as me. So that's who I made this video for. I really appreciate you guys watching this. I'll put a link to all the Windsor One stuff down in the description. And if you've used these products before, let other people know down in the comments. People read the comments and they may be curious as well. So I'm looking forward to using this stuff. But other than that, I'm going to end it here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.